the individual is greater than the state, that the individual has natural rights and an immortal soul, and the government is just an artificial creation based on fear and force, that the Constitution means what it says, that that government is best which governs least, that the people are entitled to a, constitu to a government that stays within the confines of the Constitution, and that the Constitution was written to keep the backs off the people. Now, none of those is a radical argument. Those are words, for the most part, from founding fathers and statesmen uh, throughout the country. Unfortunately, they don't resonate to the government. They resonate to people who watch the government, which is why I refer to myself half seriously and half in jest on the show as a night watchman. My job is to watch the government under cover of darkness and report to whoever wants to watch the show when the government steals liberty and when the government steals property. And as you know, Alex, and you've been a pioneer here, governments of both political parties, I should say government of the one big government party with its Republican branch and its Democratic branch, steal liberty and steal property every day. When I attacked the Bush administration for this, uh, you know, there are a lot of Republicans who get their noses out of joint. This morning, when we taped our show for uh, this weekend, Congressman Dana Rohrabacher, a right-down-the-middle conservative Republican from Southern California, former speechwriter for Ronald Reagan, looked at me and said, Almost all Republicans in the House of Representatives now believe that the war in Iraq was a mistake that it was unlawful, that it was immoral, that it wasn't worth the lives lost or the trillions that will be spent. Now, that is newsworthy that he would say it. It is newsworthy that so many Republicans would change their mind. It is newsworthy that people are starting to recognize that the government at almost all levels is out of control and there is a need for the Alex Jones Show and for Freedom Watch to remind people. And when they know where to go... They will go to listen to what the government is doing to them. Well, there's no doubt that on a level playing field where the ideas of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, our founders, common sense, when it's given a level playing field, we win every time. It's like uh, you know last year's Super Bowl team playing a group of five-year-old peewee uh, you know, football players. And that's why Obama is openly coming out, the FCC, the Federal Trade Commission. I mean, this isn't just on Freedom Watch or InfoWars.com now, ladies and gentlemen. It's now in the AP, in the Financial Times of London. Obama to have kill switch. Government to have black box in-house that watches everything you do and filters what you can see. Uh, government to have megaphone. Government to have behavior placement. I mean, this is bona fide tyranny. This is proposed by the Republicans' favorite Democrat, uh, Joe Lieberman of, uh, of Connecticut, uh, under the guise of, well, if we are attacked, uh, if the power grid is attacked, if the Internet is attacked, the president has to have the power to turn it off before the attackers can get... Uh, the power grid is not hooked up to the Internet. Precisely. There's so much illogic in there, but put aside the illogic. What about the Constitution? What about if I want my laptop turned off I'll turn it off. What about the fact that the laptop is just a modern way to exercise my freedom of speech? And the whole purpose of the First Amendment, according to Justice William Brennan, one of the most liberal appointees of the 20th century, is to keep the government out of the business of deciding what I read and what I watch and what I hear and presumes that the individual is competent to decide what to read, watch, hear, and say. There is absolutely no authority under the Constitution, whether under the under the guise of public safety or not, and the government has always used public safety as the excuse to steal our liberties, for the government to control the Internet. Oh, how the government would love to have the power over the Internet that the Chinese government has uh, over the Internet there. The Internet has been the greatest tool of the exchange of ideas and of the search for truth since the invention of the printing press. They can't control the printing press, so they want to control the Internet. And expanding on that, uh, they know they can't compete with our ideas. That's why Cass Sunstein, the regulations are. That's why the FCC's diversities are. Praises censorship of Hugo Chavez. I mean, I think Americans need to realize that we're dealing with bona fide despots and tyrants here. And we see Obama 
uh, you know, as bad as Bush was, as bad as Clinton was, it's just a progression. But now, because they're uh, know there's a wake, a huge awakening happening, they are accelerating their takeover, uh, and we see him federalizing the auto industry, federalizing the banks. We see him now, according to eight senators uh, and Fox News and others are reporting that Obama plans to sign an executive order legalizing all the illegal aliens. For those that aren't a constitutional lawyer like yourself or a former top state judge, Judge Andrew Napolitano, will you explain to them, because for my layman research, uh, the president executes law uh, and the legislative passes it. Uh, that is treason. That is uh, a act of sedition against our republic to have the president say that I'm going to launch a war without Congress's approval. I'm going to legalize foreigners. I mean, can you speak to that? Sure, sure, I can speak to it. The president has taken an oath to uphold the Constitution and the laws. When the president does things like intimidate the bondholders of GM and Chrysler during their bankruptcies to break the law, intimidate the banks to accept TARP monies uh, that they don't want, intimidate BP to cough up a $20 billion slush fund that his political appointee can distribute however he wants, intimidate insurance uh, company executives not to uh, raise premiums until the law that prohibits the raise comes into effect. He is effectively writing laws himself. That is, on its face, unconstitutional, because the Constitution says only the Congress can write laws and not the president. The flip side of this is, when he says... We haven't heard this out of his mouth, but we've heard it from people around him, and they're not denying it, which is why Fox and other uh, outlets are reporting it. He is considering a blanket amnesty of all illegals in the country. The last time we had an amnesty was in the Reagan administration. It was done by the Congress. Only the Congress can do this by changing the law. Does the Congress have the power to change the law? Yes. Does the president have the power to change the law? No. So what could he do? Well, he could, with the stroke of a pen, stop all arrests and stop all deportations. Now, that would have the practical effect of saying to illegals, you can say you can stay here. The legal effect of that, however, is to frustrate federal law, which says that illegals are not supposed to stay here or they're supposed to go through the process of becoming legal and effectively is the opposite of and what so he he's aiding and abetting lawbreakers because he's violating the law that the congress has passed Correct. and and so isn't that treason no it's not treason under the constitution but it is such an egregious a uh, failure to perform his duties that, in my opinion, it would be an impeachable offense. I mean, which is worse, for Bill Clinton to lie under oath about sex with an intern or for Barack Obama to admit openly, I don't like those laws, so I'm not going to enforce them. Now, a lot of presidents have done that. George Bush once signed a law making it a crime for federal agents to read your mail before you do without a search warrant. At the very moment that he signed the law, he looked in the cameras and said, I have no intention of enforcing this. Now, at that point, he's violating his oath because he took an oath to uphold the law. President Obama, if he does this nonsense, this monstrosity of trying to grant amnesty to everybody that is here, will effectively be doing the same thing. I would argue that the violation of the oath, the public acknowledgement of the failure to perform his job as president is far more a grounds for impeachment than what Clinton said he did with the intern under oath. Very well said. Uh, I would imagine you're aware of this case, but it's been in the Salt Lake uh, City papers. Uh, Nat Hentoff has written about it uh, for the uh, Reading Eagle. Philadelphia man indicted for using right to free speech. And I saw this a few months ago, but now they're going ahead with the three felonies. And the party has been charged for, uh, he was watching an unemployment uh, debate about getting rid of his benefits. And uh, his uh, quote is, that are you crazy? Are you all insane? No checks equals no food for me. Do you get it? And he sent it as an email. And under uh, the Telecommunications uh, Act of 1996, uh, under uh, Section 1934, he did utilize a telecommunications device. Uh, 
whether or not communication ensued without disclosing his identity, it was his email, and with the intent to annoy, abuse, threaten, and harass any person who received the communication. And it says he would serve the three counts concurrently as much as 30 years federally in prison for, for calling the senator insane. I would think that uh, uh, a federal judge would not permit such a prosecution. I'm convinced absolutely that the Third Circuit Court of Appeals, which is the federal appeals court that covers uh, Pennsylvania, would invalidate it. That court particularly uh, has a tradition uh, of being very pro-individual against the government when it comes to expressive... Sure, but what does this say about the mindset of the...